Good evening, Victory Word and Word family. Welcome to your midweek Bible study. And we are glad to be here tonight so we can celebrate what the Lord has done. We are so grateful and thankful to be in our Bible study tonight. God has brought us from Sunday morning worship to Wednesday night study. And we are so grateful and thankful for all that he has done. And I couldn't wait to get here tonight so that we could celebrate the Lord together and study this word, the word of God, which will supply our every need. And so victory word, before we get into the word, let us pray. Most gracious Father, we come before you first and foremost tonight saying thank you for allowing us to be here in your service one more time. Father, we thank you for keeping us from danger seen and unseen, and we thank you for just being who you are. Our Father, and holy is your name. So tonight, Father, we ask that you continue to be with us, open up our mind so that we can hear a word from you. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Victory Word, I'm glad to see you tonight, Word family. Glad to be in service one more time, because truly it is a wonderful blessing to be in the land of the living. I want to teach tonight uh, from the topic, our growth in kingdom living, our growth in kingdom living. And we're going to, our text for tonight is 2 Peter, uh, the second chapter, first through the ninth verses, and we're reading from the message translation. So are you ready with your word? Let's, 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 let's get into this word tonight. Let's dig in. Amen. And the word of God says, but there were also lying prophets among the people, among the people then just as there will be lying religious teachers among you. They'll smuggle in destructive divisions, pitting you against each other, biting the hand of the one who gave them a chance to have their lives back. They put themselves on a fast downhill slide to destruction, but not before they recruit a crowd of mixed up followers who can't tell right from wrong. They give the way of truth a bad name. They're only out for themselves. They'll say anything, anything that sounds good to exploit you. They won't, of course, get by with it. They'll come to a bad end, for God has never just stood by and let, the, and let that kind of thing go on. God didn't let the rebel angels off the hook, but jail them in hell till judgment day. Neither did he let the ancient ungodly world off. He wiped it out with a flood, rescuing only eight people. Noah, the sole voice of righteousness, was one of them. God decreed destruction for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. A mound of ashes was all that was left. Grim warning to anyone bent on an ungodly life. But that good man Lot, driven nearly out of his mind by the sexual filth and perversity was rescued. Surrounded by moral rot day after day after day, that righteous man was in constant torment. So God knows how to rescue the godly from evil trials and he knows how to hold the feet of the wicked to the fire until judgment day. Amen and amen. Victory Word, I come tonight to tell you that you don't have to worry because God is going to deliver you from all unrighteousness and wickedness. Don't, don't worry about what's going on at the job. Don't worry about what, what people are trying to, to do to you behind the scenes. I'm here to tell you tonight that that's going to be cut off. I'm here to cheer you on and let you know that God is in your corner, he's on your side, and guess what? The best is yet to come. 
But tonight, I'm here to, 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 to encourage us in the topic of kingdom, our growth in kingdom living. Let, let's, let's dispel some things tonight. First of all, spiritual growth, kingdom growth has nothing to do with our position in Christ. A person does not grow into becoming a, a Christian. Conversion is an instantaneous miracle. The new birth is a sudden occurrence in the life of a believer. And the moment he exercises faith in Christ, he is placed into the body of Christ. It is not a process. There may be a process of exposing someone to the gospel, but the actual point of salvation occurs in a miraculous moment. What are you saying? The day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. The day that you hear it, you are in the family. It is time for you to move forward, and it is time as you get into this word, understand this, as I just read it in the word from the message translation, that there were some lying prophets among the people then, just as there will be lying religious teachers among you today. There are all, all kind of people out here trying to tell you what God said, and they're just in this for themselves. Whatever they can get out of it. Whatever they can get out of you. But here at the Victory Word Church, it is, it is my desire to grow you. To grow you spiritually. And the more you grow spiritually, you'll know what to do financially. He will, he will put you in the direction of prosperity in that sense of, of, of monetary gain or, or whatever it is that you're looking for. When you grow spiritually, you're able to tune out all of the mess so you can hear the message. The message that God has for you. Because he has a message for all of us in our personal lives each and every day. The question is, do we tune down the noise long enough to hear his voice when he speaks? It is very important for us to understand oh, that our kingdom living, our, or, or our, our growth in kingdom living is based upon how much of this word I'm willing to eat, drink, and execute in my everyday life. There may be a process of exposing someone to the gospel, but the actual point of salvation occurs in a miraculous moment. Write this scripture down for scripture reference. Colossians, the first chapter and the 13th verse. Listen, Victory Word, I'm excited tonight. Spiritual growth is not a question of your position in Christ because you were placed in Christ the moment you put your faith in him. So, so your, your, your spiritual, your, your growth has nothing to do with your position. It has nothing to do where you are placed position wise. When you became a believer, you were placed in Christ. You received all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies and all things that pertain to life and godliness. Therefore, you became complete in him positionally. So positionally, we are okay in Christ right now. Well, why is it not working? Because we're not executing the word of God. You, can, you can't just do this when you feel like doing it. To execute the word of God means discipline, but first it means focus. What are you focusing on day by day by day by day? The word changes your perspective, your perspective on life. God changes your perspective on how you see things. How do you see it? What, 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 what lens are you looking through? Because if you're looking through just the everyday carnality or fleshly or natural side of life, you'll never, you'll never grasp the spiritual uh, awakenness that God gives you when you eat his word. And I must say, you have to execute it. You have to be the first partaker of it. You got to believe it when, when it doesn't even look believable. You got to trust him and give it time to what? To marinate in your system. 
because there's so much coming against you each and every day. I say this to you all the time, especially here in Bible study, that there's always going to be something that's trying to, to defocus you, to, to get you off your square, to get you off your praise, to stop you from worshiping God, to stop you from saying, thank you, Lord. S something is always going to be there to stop, try to stop you from raising your hands. Trust you me, your pastor goes on an emotional roller coaster many days, and I'm thankful to everything God has for me and has done for me. And yet, and still, some days I still have tears in my eyes. I still have hurt in my heart. Sometimes I have grief in my spirit. But by the grace of God, he pulls me through all of that. He pulls me through it. And that's why I'm talking tonight about our kingdom growth, growing in the kingdom of God, the spirit of God. To know that every day may not be Sunday, but every day I can worship him. I have to worship him through my pain, through my grief, through my sorrow, through my hurts, through my disappointments. I still have to say, Lord, I thank you for bringing me this far. Spiritual growth, sisters and brothers, is not a matter of God's love, time, or accumulated knowledge, or activity. Many people equate their economic situation with the favor of God. And let me get that right. That has nothing to do with God's favor. How well you live, how much money you have in your pocket. Because I'm here to tell you tonight, you can have all of that and not have peace in your mind. And that won't mean anything to you. When you have peace, you have prosperity. You need to write that down. When you have peace, you have prosperity. When the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, the peace of God will allow you to go through the fire and not be burned. The peace of God will allow you to walk through the water and the water won't overflow you. The peace of God will give you the words to speak to someone who's ready to kill themselves or to commit suicide or whatever it is they may be going through. The peace of God It will bring you peace in the midst of confusion. So don't ever get it twisted that you you wait you 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 equate what you have to God's blessings because there's there's many people that don't have things, but they have God. They have peace of mind. They have joy in the Holy Ghost. They they're able to speak to a situation and speak to a storm and it cease. They're able to go through a storm with a smile on their face, knowing that God is bringing them through. Oh, don't you ever get it twisted, Victory Word and Word Family and Believe, because you have a whole bunch of something that that's God. No, that's not just the, the manifestation of God really is how much do you have when, when you don't have all of those things? There's a lot of people that believe and trust God who will never have a million dollars. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with having a million dollars. But you better believe and know for yourself that God is bigger than my money, my house, my situation, or my circumstances. To grow in the kingdom, you better know what the kingdom consists of. Amen? As I said, many people equate their economic situation with the favor of God. And God may have blessed them, but there is not, but that is not necessarily an indication that they are spiritually mature. Don't equate, write this down, don't equate positive circumstances with God's approval of your spiritual maturity. I'll say it again. Don't equate positive circumstances with God's approval of your spiritual maturity. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean you're mature because you got a lot of stuff. 
Maturity is being able to handle situations and circumstances and say, you know what, Lord, I trust you. I may not understand it right now, but Lord, but I trust you. I may not have the answer right now, God, but I trust you. I might not know the ending of this, but I trust that you're going to bring me through because I have a testimony that down through the years, you've already been good to me. And because you've been so good to me, I have no reason but to trust you. I have no choice but to trust you. Victory Word and Word Family, write this down. Spiritual growth is matching my practice with my position. Spiritual growth is matching my practice with my position. Now my position in Christ is perfect, but I need to progress in my practical life in a way that is that is commemorative with my with my position, which which is which is comparable with my position. What are you saying? My position in Christ is good right now because when I decided that he was my Lord and Savior, I was positioned in Christ. Now I have to match my practice with my position. In other words, I can't just talk about him. I got to really have him in me and start walking that way. It's, it, let me say this. Church folks been going to church since there was a church. We've been doing that. But the Bible says a tree is known by the fruit it bears. Many, many, many of us go to church and forgot that we were the church, that we are the church where the spirit of the living God resides in. So is there anything too hard for God? So what are we complaining about? We have to, we really have to have a dose, a, a, a double dose of his word on a daily basis. Where we talk to ourselves, where we talk to ourselves and say, you know what, Lord? It's another good day to have a God day. Every time my pastor and I talk, first thing he says, it's another good day, Mike. It's another good day. And I could be in my feelings at that moment. And you know what I tell him? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. It's another good day. Anytime the Lord allows us to be in the day that he made, that he shares with us, we ought to say thank you. We ought to say thank you. In this world that we are living in right now, where uh, construction is everywhere, traffic is everywhere, stop and go, people mad and, 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 and flipping you off and all kinds of things. And it takes you an hour and a half to get from the east side to the west side, from west side back to the east side to, and, and, and different things. And people just in a, in a, in a ruckus and just... They're everywhere, all over the place. And you must have the peace of God. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. You must have the peace of God to navigate through all the hell that is around us and not allow it to get in us and still say it's another good day. Yeah, that, that's kingdom living right there. That's kingdom living when, when you used to getting home at a certain hour and you an hour and a half late getting home and you frustrated but you're not frustrated because you said you know what Lord I'm thankful that you got me home we have to really be thankful and count our blessings every day that you leave out the house you ought to pray and every day that you make it back to the house you ought to say thank you thank you Lord thank you Lord for looking beyond my faults and seeing my needs and letting me see this day. And I just want to say, thank you, Lord. You let me see another day. You didn't have to, but you did. Thank you, Lord. Took care of my children, Lord. Thank you. 
took care of my spouse, Lord, thank you. Got a roof over my head, Lord, thank you. I might be living alone, but I'm not alone because you're still with me, Lord, thank you. I may not be in the best health, but I'm thankful for my health, Lord, thank you. Thank you ought to be our, the praise off our lips, saying, Lord, thank you for keeping me from all danger, rolling my burdens away. I, I just want to say thank you tonight because you've been so good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we don't tell you thank you enough. But tonight, since we're in Bible study, we ought to go ahead and just give him some praise and say, Lord, thank you for doing what you do. Because you don't have to, but because I'm one of your children. And I'm a kingdom citizen with kingdom consciousness. I, I've learned how to... to to, I've learned how to lean and depend on you. Amen. Victory Word, the purpose of spiritual growth is the key to understanding and experiencing spiritual growth is in uh, 2 Peter 3 and 18. Read that later on when, in your free time. Read that. Growing in grace is equated to giving glory to God. I'll say that again. Growing in grace is equated to giving glory to God. The key to the process of spiritual growth is understanding what it means to glorify God. How do you glorify God in your daily life, Victory Word? What are you doing to say, Lord, if it had not been for you on my side, first of all, are, is that our testimony? Where would I be, Lord, without you? You make my day. You are my day. Is that do you? Is that your testimony? And here at the Victory Word Church, I'm I'm really I'm really trying to hammer home the importance of our testimony to someone else. We are disciples of Christ in the earth. We ought to tell somebody how good God has been to us and share our testimony with them to let them know it is a reality in serving a true and living God. We have to oh, in, 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 in our growth we really have to show others the importance of glorifying God. How do we do that? Well, number one, in our thoughts. God knows our thoughts, our mind, our heart. So if our desire is to glorify God in all that we do, then we should ensure our thoughts and emotions are glorifying him. How? By remaining true to his word. You gotta, you and I have to stay true to his word. That's how we, that's one way of glorifying God. Through our thoughts. There are things that come to our mind that try to bring us down, that try to defocus us, but we have to take our thoughts and overcome evil with good. This is not always easy, especially during rough patches in our life. But it's during this time, these times, this time our, our glorification of God means the most. When we get down, that's when we need to praise him even more. When we can't see our way, we have to realize he is the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father but by me. What does that mean? It means how can you see the Father if, 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 if you got all these other things that's, that's blocking your vision? You can't see him. But once you allow Christ to rise up in you and, and you know your identity and you start 
overcoming life's obstacles, knowing that it is he that has made us and not we ourselves, we can glorify him. That shows glorification. That even though I'm going through, what, well, come on, say it, Victor Word, you know. Say it, I, huh? I'm going through, but I'm not through going. I'm not giving up. I'm still moving, pressing my way, day after day. Sunshine and rain, heartache, heartache and pain. I'm still going. I'm going up the King's Highway. Another way that we can glorify God through our, our kingdom living is avoid abusive, harsh words, sarcasm, gossip, and negative language that's meant to hurt, insult, abuse, or belittle others. I'll say that one again for you. Avoid abusive, harsh words, sarcasm, gossip, and negative language that's meant to hurt, insult, abuse, or belittle your sister and your brother. Write this scripture down as a reference, these two scriptures. Matthew 5, 37, and John 3, 11. Those two scriptures, amen. Because back in our text, In the ninth verse, it says, So God knows how to rescue the godly from evil trials, and he knows how to hold the feet of the wicked to the fire until judgment day. Let me say this. Whoever is trying to bother you, they're not going to get by. They got a day coming. Don't you worry about it. You keep on praising God. You keep on worshiping God. You, you let them know that there's reality in serving a real God. And I'm one of his children. And he's going to take care of me. That's another way that you glorify God. By not allowing all of this outside chatter, chatter to affect you. Because people have been talking since the beginning of time. And most folks is just that mouth. Running off at the mouth just love to hear themselves talk and so victory word don't 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 let your good be evil spoken of don't worry he's going to take care of you he's going to promote you yeah but you got to do it his way so we might as well glorify him and be thankful for all he has done. Our deeds should be a reflection of Christ in our actions. Mm -hmm. Write this down. Our deeds should be a reflection of Christ in our actions. And in glorifying him, we should not be focusing on ourselves. Take the light off you. So many of us, we don't even give another person a chance to say we did a good job before we pat ourselves on the back. Let somebody else speak good of you. You don't have to always tell everybody what you did, how you did it, when you did it. It's not necessary. We're talking about kingdom living, kingdom growth. Growing in God spiritually. You don't have to tell everybody what you've done. For, for an individual. You don't have to tell them. You don't have to tell them that you helped me. Let me tell somebody that you helped me. Another way we can glorify God is through our attitude. Our attitude. Our perspective about life and people and ourselves is an outward reflection of our inner self. Yeah, I'm going to say it again. Glorifying God through our attitude, our perspective about life 
people and ourselves is an outward reflection of our inner self. Woo! Yeah. I can tell the way you treat me how you treat yourself. And that's why as, as being kingdom-minded citizens, we have to do like Jesus said, love thy neighbor as thyself and love the Lord thy God with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. That's how we glorify God. How, Pastor? By giving our all to him because he gave his all to us. Another way, and I'm almost done for tonight, that we glorify God is in good times and bad times. Christ suffered for us, and when we suffer, we grow in our holiness, and our relationship with Christ becomes stronger. When you say suffering, I don't mean in pain and all that. Suffering is sometimes it's suffering to make sure that I stay in right relationship with God. I, I, I suffer in the sense of, you know, it, 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 there's in my flesh I want to do one thing, but in my spirit I'm going to stay lined up with God's righteousness. You know, I want to say something to you. I want to say some not so good words, but I'm going to bridle my tongue and I'm going to have God guide my mind and my footsteps because I, I'm, I have kingdom consciousness now. I don't have to prove everything. I don't have to say everything to, to prove who I am because now that my identity is strong in Christ, I'm able to glorify God through my deeds through my deeds, my actions, the way I treat other people, the way that I love on one another, the way I, I have compassion. So I don't have to go through all of this other stuff. All I have to do is be connected to God's stuff. And it will show how I have grown and how we grow in our kingdom living. I got one more I want to share with you tonight. I can glorify God how out of our physical self, the way we treat the bodies Christ gifted us with. How are you treating your physical body? Are you taking care of it? Are you taking care of yourself emotionally? Mental health is very important these days. It's always been important, but it's being spoken on so much more today. Your mental health, I'm concerned with your mental health, your spiritual health, emotional and physical and financial. All of that plays a part in my kingdom consciousness. And the more that I put God first, the more he allows me to, to navigate these other things, my physical health. As you know, I'm still rehabbing from surgery. It's a slow process, but I thank God for the process. I thank him every day that I'm able to stand on my feet and walk. Because a few, few months ago, I couldn't even walk. But by God, the grace of God, He's brought me from a long way. And I'm sure he's brought you from a long way too. So you might as well give him some glory and praise tonight in your living room, in your dining room, in your bedroom, wherever you hear this message from. You ought to stop right now and give him praise for all that he has done, for every mountain he brought you over and through every valley that he carried you through. You ought to say, Lord, thank you for if it had not been for you on my side, I would have lost my mind. I feel like preaching now. If it had not been for him on my side, I would have lost it all. I would have lost my mind. I would have given 
giving up. But the grace of God and the word of God has transformed me because Paul put it in this tense. He said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ is what's guiding me right now. And I pray that it's guiding you as well for you to be the best you and for you and I to be a mirror image of Christ in the earth. I got to go. I got to go because I could go on, but I got to go. I thank God for you. I thank God for all of you tuning in tonight. I'm praying that the Bible study helps you to grow uh, and helps you build back up to be that which God has created and called you to be. But if there's one that would like to give their life to Christ tonight, just pray this simple prayer with me. Lord, I'm a sinner and I repent of my sin. I accept the Lord Jesus the Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to be a mirror image of him walking and talking in the earth. And if you prayed that simple prayer, that's all it took for you to reconcile yourself back to your creator. For you to say, I'm back in the family, God. Now I'm ready to walk and be a, a mirror image of your son, Jesus the Christ, in the earth. I challenge you to join a Bible teaching church that will teach you the realities of serving the true and living God and how to get in contact with that God, that Christ that lives in you and I. And if that is the victory word church, we are a church that is a judgment free zone. We don't beat you up. We pick you up and we watch God lift you up. And all you have to do is call the church office at 313-243-4512. You'll be glad you did. Someone from our staff will call you back and they will invite you to be a part of the fellowship here at Victory Word Church. If you'd like to sow a seed into the ministry, this opportunity is yours to sow a seed because God loves a cheerful giver. And this is good ground to sow in the Victory Word Church. It's on, your, it's on our screen. So there's different ways for you to give and we're thankful and we are thankful and grateful for all those that do give to the Victory Word Church for the growth of the kingdom. And we thank you for providing uh, love to this ministry. Amen. Amen. Well, Victory Word, it was, it was another good night. Great night. I'm glad we were able to share tonight with one another. On behalf of myself, Lady T., AP Mark Oliver and the entire staff here at the Victory Word Church. We love you. We're praying for you. Remember, there's victory in the word and we are living our future now. God bless you. I'll see you next week.